So let's get this Mac Studio unboxed. Let's see what's all in here. Just like Apple typically does, they've got it all boxed up pretty nice. Looks like maybe a quick start guide or some instructions. It's a lot heavier than I thought. You probably already read the specs on it already, but it's got four Firewire uh, ports in the back, two in the front, SD card reader. All right, so there's not a whole lot of exciting news to uh, having this unboxed, but we got her unboxed. Let's get her hooked up. Hey, if you're new to the channel, I'm Ray with Second Chance Rising, and this is the channel that's more than just about our music, but it's about our ministry as well as mixing tutorials and gear reviews. Hey, if this kind of stuff has interested you, make sure you hit that follow button, hit that subscribe button. We're in the transition of upgrading our studio from mixing 100% in the box to more than a hybrid setup. And I found out that our old Mac Mini is just not cutting it anymore. Uh, so if you've ever been wondering about that, stick around. We're going to kind of show you the comparisons. Right now, I'm going to show you a typical song session uh, using our old Mac Mini. And what we're using is a, a 2018 uh, i7. I think it's 3.2 gigahertz. It's got 64 uh, megabytes of RAM. And I'm going to show you a little bit about what the performances and the issues that we're having now. And then I'm going to get... Uh, the Mac Studio hooked up uh, and tell you a little bit about the specs on that and we're, we're going to see the differences on the performance using Studio One version 6. So if, as you can see here I just got a simple session uh, pulled up. This is really my vocal that's muted right here. Um, just got a couple tracks in it. Let's look at the performance um, on here on the disk based. Of course I've got OBS running as well uh, in this session. But I'm using about 31 to 37 percent. It's kind of peeking out here and there. Um, got the dropout protection is off. Uh, this is working okay. Until you play it and it's already popping and crackling. Uh, I don't know if that came through on the audio, if that's just what I'm hearing, but hopefully you can hear a little bit of that. I'm not going to play too much of that. That's a reference track, so I don't want to get a copyright strike and pull the, pull the video off. Uh, so we can kind of see there that the that the that the system's already struggling. Yes, I can put the dropout uh, uh, protection down. Uh, just reduced it down to about 21, 22 percent. So not that much. Uh, and this is a very simple session. Um, let's look at the devices we've got running here. So really, that's all I have on the session. Um, there's a couple of DSers, just some, some fat channel stuff. And all of that is sitting idle. The, the reverb is just ticking up just a couple percent, which is sitting idle as well, too. Um, so not a whole lot going on there. Um, and listen, I really wasn't having the performance issues until I upgraded to version 6. Now, I'm a Personas fanboy. I'm, don't be saying, oh, it's not version 6. It's not that. I'm not saying it is. We got an old system, as I explained before. I can just tell you that I really started to notice a difference with this latest upgrade. Um, so let's take another look at a larger session right here. This is our, our latest release um, prayer session. And it's taking a minute to pop up here. We get the beach ball. Hopefully we don't crash. So we can see here that um, I know this won't probably play at all. It's actually playing pretty decent. I've got the dropout protection on medium. Um, if we turn that off, uh, it's spiking as you can see here. So that's not good. So we'll, let's put the dropout protection back down. Um, let's put it back down on medium. Oh. Let's put it back on medium again. So that's dropping down. At this particular time, this song hasn't been released. I'm not going to play much of it. I'll play a little bit of it, see what we got. I didn't understand. Not all. So it's running there, um, and you can see um, this session's still not loaded down with a lot of 
um, plugins. We can see here, I got some Waves Harmony uh, going on in some of the vocals. Those are hogs, those are using 22, 23%. And yes, I can print them. I, I fully understand that. Save a little CPU, but sometimes I like to go back and, and tweak some of these later on. Even after released, it, just trying to learn something, see if I can make mixes better. I'll make a copy of it. So yes, I could print those and save up some CPU, but I'm not really willing to do that right now. And I want the system. It's time to upgrade anyhow. So, um, But that's where uh, most of this CPU is uh, coming from. We're, this is going to give us a good comparison to see what uh, the Mac uh, Mini is going to do. Also, let's pull up the um, the Mac uh, Activity. Okay, so here's a little bit about um, so here's the Activity monitor here on the Mac, and it's um, it's only using like 22 or 23 percent of uh, the 64 gigabytes of RAM, and then the CPU power um, with what we've got going here. Um, is using about 18% and the user's using about 74%, I guess is that's what that's called it. So I guess my CPU load is struggling from the way I understand that. I am not a computer geek. I just know this is not working and we're going to hope the Mac Studio is working. So back here in Studio One, let me get rid of this other thing here. So this is kind of part one or the part A of this. I don't know how long it's going to take me to get this Mac Studio up and running. Might take me three or four hours, might take me all day, might take me a couple days, but in the magic of the internet and YouTube, we will uh, just splice that right in here, then we'll see and we'll make some comparisons and hope you, hope you can make a better uh, buying decision when you get ready to purchase your Mac. What's going on y'all? Hey, to the magic of YouTube, it's about a week and a half later. I've got the Mac Studio all loaded up. To give you an idea, I've got four external hard drives running. I've um, got the sound libraries for uh, Studio One as well as um, the sound libraries for Superior Drummer, which are pretty extensive. Uh, one of the other hard drives got all my video stuff on it. Um, but everything seems to be a pretty big improvement. You, one of the first tests I want to show you, um, I just showed a little bit of time last of it right before I came on, and that was how long it took uh, Studio One to load uh, the new song. We've got prayer sessions out. It took about a minute, 25 minute and 30 seconds. So one of the first tests we're going to see is see how long it takes to load up that same song in Studio One here on the new Mac Studio. So let's check it out and see what we've got. All right, so Magic YouTube, that was a little time lapse, so we didn't have to sit through the whole thing. That was that was just around a minute, just shy of a minute. So not a huge difference, but about, um, you know, about 30, 25 to 35 seconds, roughly, uh, difference between it loading up on the Mac Studio and loading up uh, from the Mac Mini. So let's take a look and see what we have here. Um, here in Studio One, this is the second song that I was comparing it to um, that was really redlining. And you can see here on the performance, a couple notes, is we're using about 30% here of the CPU power. Um, I've got the dropout protection set to zero. Uh, it's off. Um, and remember before I had that set, um, I had that set at medium on the other one. And when we, when we set it to off, it was red line. It was completely unplayable with all the cracks and the pops. So you can see here, um, that, uh, hardly using any CPU and we'll play a little bit of it here. Let me move it up to some music. So no cracking and popping, um, I've got the sample set at 64 and I had it set at 512 on the other one. So a great big improvement here. Um, just using just a touch of the CPU here on these Waves Harmony plugin, which those were hogs. I think they were up to about 30% uh, on the other program. So pretty big improvement here on the performance of this. Um, let's take a look at the activity monitor on, on the Mac itself. We can see here now it's it's all green before uh, on the other one it was showing up some red and 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 
And quite honestly, I'm not a big computer geek. I don't know exactly what all this means. I know some of y'all know a lot more about it than I do. Um, so maybe you can comment down below to help some other people out. But the performance of the Mac Studio is clearly uh, giving me what I needed over um, my Mac Mini i7. A couple things here we'll see. Um, it's using about right at 20 gigabytes of the memory um, from the 32 gigabytes. So the other uh, Mac Mini had 64 gigabytes. This is using 19 to 32, but it's unified. So I know that makes a big difference in the other kind of RAM that I had in the other uh, Mac Mini. And from what I understand, this is not like we're almost using more than half of it. From what I understand, if the computer needs it or the program needs it, it will take this away from this uh, being used and use it where it's needed to be used from what I understand. So um, CPU uses all together. Um, got just a little bit of a red line right here, um, using about 8% of it, so I guess that's pretty good. But everything um, in a nutshell has been working um, just like I planned. I know a lot of people said I didn't need the the, the M2 and the Mac Studio, and, and that's true. But a couple things that I'll tell you is the reason why I chose this. So first is what I was trying to decide. I, I knew I needed to upgrade, so then it kind of came down to... Um, really the M2 Mac Mini or the M2 Mac Studio. A lot of people were using the M1s, not having any problem with that, but the M1s, uh, really Apple didn't have them for sale anymore unless I got a refurbished one or maybe a used one. And they've already come out with the M3s, which really aren't very good anymore, added benefit from what I understand from music production. So it left uh, me with the choice of the M2 Mac Mini or the M2 Mac Studio. And just kind of looking at the specs on the uh, the M2 Mac Mini's eight core, four core performance cores from what I understand. Um, the uh, Mac Studio had 12 cores with eight performance cores and four efficiency cores. So I understand, you know, that's gonna help out tremendously. Um, also another thing, um, the Mac Mini standard, the, the M2 version, the regular base version comes with eight gigabytes of RAM where the M2, uh, the Mac Studio came with 32. I knew I'd, I, I was gonna definitely want more than eight gigabytes. I, I wanted at least 32, but by the time you even get 16 or 24, your price starts to go up to almost the same price of the Mac Studio. Uh, the base model on the M2 uh, had, uh, Mac Mini had 256 gigabytes of storage. Um, the M2 Studio the Max had uh, 512, which is what I got because I run a lot of external hard drives anyhow. Uh, that's really all I need in the computer itself. A lot of people maybe want to get one terabyte. Um, and then, you know, by the time if you upgraded those couple things right there, the storage and, 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 a, and a little bit of memory, then you're up to the price of the studio. So you might as well get the studio, right? So another big consideration was the Firewire port. So the standard um, Mac Mini only had two uh, Thunderbolt uh, ports and the uh, the Mac Studio had six. So I really wanted uh, the extra ports uh, because you know running a camera, running a MIDI keyboard, running the interface, um, three or four hard drives typically hooked up on it at one time. All of that combined just made seem like the right buying decision for me. Didn't really want to spend that much money right now on the upgrade, but um, all in all, I think it's going to work out good. I only get a computer about every seven to ten years is upgrading though, so I'm hoping you know I can get you know seven to ten years life out of this one before I need to upgrade. The performance is definitely um, I think been worth it from what I can see so far. I've been uh, doing a little bit of recording and a little bit of mixing in here for the last week, so it's been pretty good. Also um, worth mentioning is if you're going from an older machine to a newer machine on the Mac, just don't switch this over from hard drive, your sound libraries, and some of your uh, external content and programs, third party, you know, like maybe Fab Filter, University Audio, and things like that. I did a fresh install uh, with version 6 Studio One, as well as all the plugins because you're using a different chip now, you're using the M M2 chip uh, versus like the Intel chip. So new install and and pretty much it went pretty it went pretty flawlessly didn't have a whole lot of trouble had one plug in one reverb from rehab that i had to uh load it up a couple different times and lost the settings on some of the older songs but wasn't too big a deal um so but hey i hope this has helped you i know it's not the most scientific um 
analysis of these two computers, but kind of more real world and what I'm seeing uh, as a musician, as a producer. Um, but I hope it's helping you make your next buying decision if it's time for you to upgrade. If it has, I hope that you'll uh, hit that subscribe button, that follow button. We've got some more videos coming out in our studio conversion from 100% uh, in the box to going to more hybrid setup. Hey, stay tuned. We love you. God loves you. Keep looking up. We'll see you next time.